Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture on stacks. So stacks are a very fundamental data structure and even though we consider them basic, the implementation in code is not so simple. So the best way to think of stacks is using our plain English definition. And what I mean by that is that what do you think of when you have a stack of something? Well, you could have a stack of boxes, a stack of plates, right? Something that you can put on top of something else. However, in terms of programming, what we're looking at is stacks of integers, stacks of what else? Floats, other classes that you can consider, really any sort of uh, object or some sort of data type. You can have a stack of it. And it's, it's very similar to uh, an array, and a dynamically allocated array, or even a linked list. Right? This just seems like a more specific implementation of that. However, what makes a stack, well, a stack is how data is added and removed. It actually follows a last in, first out procedure. And to illustrate that, first let's see how data is added to the stack. So in this case, we're going to be adding three integers. Uh, the integer one is added to an empty stack where the stack is zero and there's no data that exists. On the second step, we have a stack an existing stack with just the value one and we're adding a number two to it and then on the next illustration here we have three getting added to the stack right so here we're adding data to the end and if you implement this as a, an array or a linked list we're adding to the back we're adding to the end of the array right so this is one property of the stack when we add data to the stack, we're adding it to the end of the array or to the end of the linked list. Actually, that's only half true. Um, the idea is that if you can also add it to the beginning, but it can only be the beginning. The idea is that, the generalized idea is that you just need to add to one end of whatever underlying data structure that you have, whether it be an array or a linked list or doubly linked list or something else. Right, but now let's talk about what happens when data is removed from the linked list. When data is removed, the first element that is removed is going to be the last element that was added. So if we move to this figure in figure two and we look at well we have um, we have a stack and at the bottom we have one and going up to the top we have five when five is at the top of the stack when we push off data when we pop data from the stack we're taking off what was at the top and in this case the number five was at the top of the stack so we get rid of it Right, then we have a stack of four numbers, one, two, three, four, where four is at the top of the stack. And when we want to pop off the stack again, meaning remove data from the stack, we pop that four because four is at the top. Right, and this is, uh, <clears throat> and this is important because this is what makes a stack a stack, uh, this specific implementation. So something that's consistently important as you manipulate data to the stack is what's on top, right? So here in this case, the number five is on top in figure two. Um, when we need to take a look at data that we're about to remove, it's always important to look at the top because when we add data, we're changing the top. When we're removing data, we're also changing the top. So seeing the stat the top of the stack is important so that way you you know what data you have just added and what data you have just removed and in terms of this now what we'll do is that we'll create our we will create our stack using dynamically allocated arrays so in this example we're going to start with vim and I'm going to call it dynamic 
stack dot HPP. You can also go for dot H. I personally like dot HPP. So now let's take a look at this. So we'll need to include the standard IO package, standard IO stream, and we'll begin. So because this is a stack, usually the implementation of the stack is generalized. We can have a stack of anything. So because of that fact, I'm going to, going to use a template. I'll say class, and I call it data. Very, very clever, I think. So we created a class called stack. And, well, what are the two most important things of the stack? Well, I like to think that there's two, <laughs> first of all. That's why I said the two most important things. Um, is the size of the stack. I think it's important to keep track of the, the size. And, well, the data itself. So in this case, I'm going to take the route of using dynamic memory allocation for the stack. So I'm going to say data which is part of the template class here. So this is a generalization of whatever we have. So if we can, with, with this, we can create a stack of integers, we can create a stack of doubles, a stack of uh, a complex class, whatever, a, a stack of any sort of data type. And because we are doing dynamic memory allocation, I'm going to create a pointer to data. I'm gonna call it values. Right, so this is this is how the the internal data of the stack is going to work. Oops, I forgot the private here. Let's push everything right here. So here we have the private data of the stack, right? And this will be what's internal, the internal data, what's important about the stack. So now here we're going to talk about the public functions and for the rest of this, this video, we are just going to cover the constructor, a parameterized constructor, a copy constructor, and a destructor. So let's start with the constructor. It's going to be unparameterized, so we're going to give it no parameters. And well, what happens when we have an empty stack? Well, if the stack is empty, the size should be equal to zero. And what about the data, right? If there's no data, well, how do we represent that there's no data when we're using a pointer? Well, we want to point that pointer to null, right? So with these two values, we know that our stack is empty when the size is zero and when values is equal to null. But now, what if we want to initialize our stack with one value? And, well, we can cover that. We can do that. So I'll say data, and I'll say value. Okay. If we're given a value to start off our stack, well, our size should be equal to 1. And values, well, since values is a pointer, we'll need to dynamically allocate data for it. So I'm going to use new and then data and initialize this dynamically allocated variable with value. All right, so now we have a stack that's size one and we have a dynamically allocated one size of data. Right, so if this is an integer, I'm going to be allocating just one integer and initializing it to value. If this was, um, let's say, a string as well, I would be dynamically allocating one string and initializing it to value. It's very abstract. Right, but this is going to be the parameterized default constructor. So now, let us take a look at the copy constructor, right? So if you want to initialize a stack by using another stack, here's how we're going to be doing it. So we're going to make it const, and I'm going to say stack s. Okay. So here we're going to be assuming 
that the data is the same. That data from stack S is going to be the same as the internal stack data. So what do we need to check? Well, first we need to be checking the size. And we actually need to be checking the size consistently. So I'm going to make a size T. And I'm going to call it S size. I'm going to say S dot size. Right. So this is interesting. What I've done is I've assumed that the stack is going to have a function called size in the future. And this will be something that we'll need to keep track of in the future. Because if we don't provide a definition for size for the stack class, this will generate an error. Um, alternatively, we can do this, size t s size equals s dot underscore size. But personally, I like to use a getter function for this, which is what s dot size will do. And we'll define that. So the first thing to check is, is the size empty? Well, if it is, then we've really got nothing to worry about. We can follow the same pattern as we did for our unparameterized default constructor. However, if this is not the case, then size is going to be some arbitrary value. So one thing that I'd like to do is to play it safe, especially with dynamically allocated variables. Uh, because we're using pointers, uh, we don't want to run the risk of trying to dereference or get data from a pointer that's been nullified. So what I'm going to do to alleviate that is that I'm going to be taking a copy of the data from the stack, putting it into a locally dynamically allocated uh, variable, and then I'm going to be copying it to the internal data. Just so that way in case that uh, there's any problems with the stack in between copying it over, we'll be fine. So I'm going to start that by creating a pointer and I'm going to say data copy pointer to data is going to be equal to and we're going to allocate some data for it. We're going to be allocating an array of data so we'll say s size. Right? And this is generalized. I can be allocating a, an array of one and all that kind of thing. Right, so here this is generalized, which is nice. And I'm going to create an iterator, int i. Now I'll have a for loop. I'm going to say i is less than 0. i is going to be less than s size. Right, because we just want to copy the data inside of s into our internal class. And we want to iterate by 1 because we want to copy everything. So because data copies a pointer, there's a possibility that it could be an array or it could be a singular value. In this case, because it's a pointer, I need to dereference it. But because of the possibility that it might be an array, I need to offset it. And this is how it will be done. So data copy plus i, and whatever that memory location is, we're going to dereference that, is going to be equal to, well, the internal data of s values. Oops. I need to dereference it. Right. So here what we're going to be doing is that we're going to take s.values, whatever data is in there, and we're going to be copying it over to data copy. And i is going to be the same offset given to both s.values and data copy, so it'll copy it one for one which is pretty nice. So now we'll do a check. If s size is equal to 1, then it's going to be the similar case of our parameterized default constructor, where we just need to allocate data just for 1. Just for 1 data and we can do that just by dereferencing data copy because when we dereference data copy this way we're dereferencing without an offset 
so it'll get the original value right it's the same as uh, accessing it as an array doing the same thing as this so values just for an analogy data copy of zero right it's analogous to that next is gonna happen is that we need to consider the case that s size is greater than one and if it's greater than one well we can treat it like an array and we can copy it like an array so we'll have the else our little else statement and if size is greater than one well we need to allocate that space for values and this is the statement that will do it we'll allocate an array to the the size of uh, s kind of like how we did with data copy and what we'll do is a for loop that's similar to our to the beginning of our um, this for loop. Actually, I'll just copy that. All right, and we'll want to copy. We'll want to store everything into values. And we want to grab the copy from data copy. We want to grab all the data from data copy. And I got to remember to give it that offset because it's an array. Right? So here the copying is done. The internal data of, of this class that's calling the stack copy constructor has just received a copy of the data from stack s. Now what we need to do is two things. We need to update the size. So our internal size is going to be s size, which makes sense because we're copying the data from s to our own class. So it makes sense that we copy s size onto size. But now there's one last thing that we need to account for. On line 25, we have a dynamically allocated variable that that needs to be deleted right we want to prevent a memory leak so in that here I'm going to say delete this array of data copy it should not be an underscore and that'll be the end of the copy constructor right and this is very important because we're messing we're messing with dynamically allocated data is that when there's no use for data copy or when there's no use for a dynamically allocated variable like data copy here we need to make sure that we delete it so now let's take a look at the destructor so we'll say stack and we preface the class with the tilde to mean as destructor so one thing that I'll do is that if our size is less than two meaning it's one or or zero we're just going to delete values and this is the key this is the way for deleting one dynamically allocated variable or for if it's already null then to keep it deleted Otherwise, if the size is equal to zero or greater, then it's an array. So we need to delete it like it's an array. Right, this is especially important. And, and here in the destructor, it's very important that we, that we dynamically, um, with our dynamic variables, that we free them. Right, that we delete them. Because we don't want any memory leakages. And with that, we're going to conclude our video. Um, in the next video, what we're going to cover is we're going to cover the getters. Importantly, the size getter, because we defined that up here. Well, we, we called it here in the destructor, and we also call our size getter here on the copy constructor. So we need to define it. So we'll be doing that on the next video. And we'll also be looking at top 
we'll be looking at top and seeing how we can get the top of an, of our stack. Thank you.